This playthrough is rated T for teen. All right, everyone out of the pool. It's time for Adult Swim. Greetings and salutations, viewers. While we're back here with another episode of Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. In the last episode, we went to the elemental plane of fire, uh, got burnt to a crisp. Youch! And fought Isaac Gore, the Red Dragon. So now the Dungeon and Dragons part of the game has been completed because we've done dungeons and we fought a dragon. Boom. Ready to go. So now we're heading on to the elemental plane of air, water. So we're going to need to bring some either cold gear or something hot to uh, deal with this. So let's, uh, well, we'll unsell our equipment from that adventure or the previous adventure. So, yeah, I didn't get a whole lot of equipment. But let's see. Ooh. Imperial full plate boots. Uh, oh, but the. Not flawless, though, but that's still better. Uh, ooh, flawless leather armor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I've got to gotta remember to take advantage of, now that we're going to get really good gear, and we're almost at, actually, we're at the end of Act 3 almost. Like, as soon as we get the final MacGuffin here and finish a little bit of stuff, we're going to head on to the final act of the game. But uh, I almost want to just beef up my leather armor there. Uh Nah, we'll just we'll just sell the flawless leather armor. But I think I want to keep the helmet because I think that might be what I use for the rest of the game. Actually, the boots, maybe that too. I might just pump those up for the finale. Okay. <clears throat> oh yeah, I want to break down those gloves. Um, put the fire fire stuff on. So let's break that down. And then uh, workshop. The, those gloves that I got, <clears throat> or the gloves, again. Yeah, a little bit of a cost there, but uh, eh, it's fine. Okay, so let's put on the, the boots, helmet. Yeah, unfortunately we don't get to see her pretty face anymore. Oh well, that's just how it is. Welcome back. Yeah, it's not like you can see her face that well anyway, so. It's been a while since I've gotten some uh, ex good extra gear. Let's see. I'm good on most of my stuff. Got a ton of gems. Yeah, I got a ton of healing potions, but I'm keeping those uh, for now. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to need to start modding some stuff here pretty soon. I've got a decent amount of money, so. Oops. Wait, did I actually. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so, all right, let's go to the Emblemental Plane of Ice. I wonder who we're going to fight there. Well, unfortunately, we haven't really run across anyone, obviously, that could fit that spot. So it's got to be like the Elemental Plane of Air, which has got to be a person that we just randomly ran across. Like, oh, okay, cool, we'll fight you, even though we don't really have any ties to you. That's why I like the Elemental Plane of Earth and Fire. At least we ran across those villains before we fought them, but oh well. Jarek tells me I am to transport you to the Elemental Plane of Water. The magic of the Water Foundation will somewhat tame the surrounding environment, so you will not drown. Are you prepared to go? Yep, let me get my floaties, and I'll be ready to go here. I'll warn you again, Khan. Your men will only die here. Nothing can stand between my magic and my foes and live. You're powerful indeed, Eludra, but your arrogance will be your undoing. How dare you! You think to command me, worm? I do, and by your master's wishes, do not forget that. The men stay. Farewell. <laughs> Alright, some random old crone called Eludra is going to be fighting us. And yay, we don't have to worry about dropping in the water, so woo! <clears throat> I've heard in some version of this game, or at least some people when they played, they said the water like works weird in this place. Like sometimes it looks like it's black. I don't remember that too well, but I remember some people saying in some description. That might have been some certain versions of the game or something like that, or maybe certain PS3s. But anyway, we got squids here. Squid! Are you a kid or a squid now? Unfortunately, these guys aren't particularly weak to fire, and they can do the whole ice you, so... If you do have ice equipment, uh, you know, obviously 5%, that wouldn't be too bad. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not going to do it since they're not particularly weak to fire in this place. I just didn't want to use ice cold because, you know, they'd be resistant, they'd be strong against that. So, so yeah, no 300 damage again, unfortunately. And, oh well. 
Not much I can do on that. But that's fine. Oh, right, I guess I could... Oops, I actually didn't... Well, that, that doesn't look too bad. <coughs> yeah, unfortunately, can't stun him. I think these squids are technically ice elementals. Yeah, these guys can be pretty dangerous, be mainly because of the... Um, their, uh, like, freeze ability or slow ability, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, I might stick to the uh, knife for this part. Just because they keep hitting me with that slow ability, and I don't really have any particular resistance to it, so... It looks like they're moving pretty slow themselves. I just can't do the regular crits on these guys, so. Yeah, I think they're technically ice elementals, despite them looking like flying flying jellyfish or well, I guess they would be flying jellyfish. I don't know why I called them squids. Because yeah, they're they look like man of wars. Although it's like the way that they almost kinda reminds me of bloopers for some weird reason, even though they don't have those eyes or anything like that. Almost uh, got to them before they started freezing. So, yeah, not quite. Ooh, aquamarines. Yeah, the, because it's the elemental plane of water, we're gonna get a lot of aquamarine drops. So, so that'll help us with upgrading stuff. So, if we want to do ice stuff anyway, or ice resistance or something like that. But there are combinations of stuff that uh, I really do need at some point to go over. I mean, since we're about to in enter the final ad, maybe I'll do like the beginning of the episode talking about like what, sh what element, what what stuff does what but luckily you can uh, you don't have to make an I uh, make an item to tell like what the stuff will do so I might just do an episode or at least the beginning of episode where I just show like what can do what because I should have done that earlier but I was kind of waiting for us to get almost every gem in the game so that way I could actually show you what the combinations are uh, of equipment and really at the beginning of the game like not till really till the final actually I guess a middle, maybe Act 3 is when you're really supposed to start focusing on workshop stuff or at least pay attention to it. But on a, I don't know, even on hard mode, I didn't really have to worry about equipment too much. Um, except for maybe the fire one where I got the ice one. I probably could have made my adventure easier if I'd really been b d knuckling down and trying to take advantage of all the workshop. But it cost money to like break down and remake stuff multiple times. I was trying to like find ways to be economically you know, useful by not spending so much cash on that. But uh, when you get to extreme, when you get to extreme mode, that's when you have to actually pay attention to, uh, you know, workshop, customize your stuff because extreme mode, well, it's extreme and a lot more difficult than the, uh, uh, even the hard version, which I'm playing. Oh, we got Yetis. I don't know what Yetis are doing in the elemental plane of, of uh, water, but okay. I mean, it's technically, I guess, even though it's the elemental plane of water, it's actually like ice. Maybe it's the foundations doing or whatever. Because, yeah, if you normally would go into the elemental plane of water, you would drown without, like, water breathing or something like that just because there's no actual, it would be in the ocean. You'd basically walk into a big ocean, basically. Um, yeah, you wouldn't have any air to breathe, um, torrential waters and all this other stuff, you know, all types of nasty creatures living in an elemental plane of water, usually elementals, but still. Although weirdly enough, the elemental the elemental planes of, of elements aren't even the worst planes to go to. I mean, there's like the elemental plane of shadow. There's one where you could go to the abyss. You could go to heaven. At least in D and D, which is insane when you think about it. Oh, did I destroy? I forgot. You need to start. You need to destroy those uh, stones on the way um, here because they have uh, equipment. But I don't think I really ran into any, did I? Let me double check again. I think there was one here, and I broke it and everything so yeah probably good if I missed one that's fine I don't, I don't need a ton of aquamarines anyway I mean I'd like to have them I can just for some of the builds but yeah I think uh, during act 4 I'll go over like what I want to have my final equipment be and everything like that I know a lot of it does get dropped like right before the finale but and I also want something ready to go when I go to extreme mode but I'll do that on my own time and then get back to you. The reason why I want to do is I want to show something off. Um, mainly something you can only get from buying beating extreme mode. So. And I'll go over extreme mode difficulties whenever, or like how to do it and everything like that when you actually get to it. But maybe as a bonus episode or something like that. But anyway, elemental plane of water. Um, yeah, water elementals, most of them are uh, resistant to water, or resistant to ice attacks. Um, I think some, a good deal of them are immune, but 
You'd be surprised how many like elementals aren't actually immune to that damage. Um, but most of them will be at least highly resistant. Uh, I don't think they have any particular weaknesses, and obviously they can't be crit because they're elementals, so they don't have a lot of liver to stunt, uh, to stab. But uh, yetis can be crit. Uh, oops, I had a sprint on a stunning blow. Body blow, body blow, body blow. Are you beating your chest? Well, I stun you. Ha, you go squish now. Yeah, I just love stunning stuff. I just get to hop all the way here. Hop, hop, hop. Good. Yeah, since I beefed up my stunning blow, they'll. I do a little bit more damage when I stunning blow them, but two, I also. Uh, yeah, they'll be stunned for a lot longer. Hmm. Can I actually jump over that? No. I didn't think so. Oh, there's stairs there. I didn't even notice that for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, got a little ice thing. Aqua raindrop. Oop. Wow, that thing flew in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Yetis basically do the same thing from the previous game where they throw rocks at you and if they hit you, they have a chance of uh, slowing you down. Or almost freezing you, I guess, to be their explanation. Another offer me. Anything else in here? Yep, another little ice. I was about to say, it better drop. I would have preferred, like in the previous areas, where the gems dropped instead of uh, um, gold and stuff like that, you know, cause, just because gems are more expensive so I'd rather do that because usually if you get the gold it's definitely not worth it usually it's like 100 gold I'm like dude a gem costs like 8,000 give me that gold or give me that gem but if you have high charisma it's not as bad but usually in most builds especially if you're trying to survive extreme mode usually you usually shouldn't be doing um, high charisma on your character you should be using it on either like strength or something like that actually most builds usually set, have you just improve your strength like, because everything else can kind of be fixed via gameplay. Like, a constitution, yeah, if you don't have the health regeneration, just use your money to buy a bunch of uh, potions. You know, or if your health regeneration is just really low, just, uh, you know, back away from the enemy, let it regen. Yeah, it'll take a while, but you can still do that. So you can just run off for a while, let it regen. I mean, obviously, as a recording, I can't do that because that would be boring to watch. And even if I did do that, I would cut it out, but I haven't done that yet in this game, so. At least I don't recall doing it. Maybe I did at the very beginning when we were first starting out, maybe, but I haven't done it since. Everything is me uh, healing potioning, healing potioning everything, so. Because that's just the way you gotta do it, man. Although if you're playing with your friends, like if you're playing co-op mode or something like that, you probably do the wouldn't wait around either, uh, either because you know you'd want to get to the action. So. And yeah, unfortunately, I can't really show you co-op mode just because I'm I'm forever alone, don't have any friends, so I can't really show that to you. So, like if there's a difference between the two different versions, there is. Uh, if you have a secondary player, monsters get a little bit more HP. Um, and I think, if I recall, I think some areas get you get more monsters, but not by much. Because this game wasn't super designed with that. Despite it having co-op, it wasn't really designed for multiplayer mine because it didn't really... There isn't a major difference between the two, to tell you the truth. Even though the game acts as if there's multiple people here, it almost, it almost seems like it's designed for single player. Which, I mean, a lot of console games were. I mean, even... Except, well, until the really the strong advent of uh, multi first person shooters, which had been around since PlayStation 1, but they really didn't hit their stride till like, you know, mid uh, mid uh, PS2 era onwards. And really, it was the PS3 that really kind of cemented it because of the whole online. So it was, it was done, a, it was a, it, online stuff was incorporated better, obviously. PS2 did have some online stuff. But you had to buy like a unique modem and all this other crazy stuff. And most people usually used it to buy EverQuest. Yeah, before World of Warcraft, Ever EverQuest was the, the crack of the gaming world. That's what that's what everyone was playing if you were in MMOs. I mean I never played it, but I knew people who did. And man, that's that's something that people played. You know, EverQuest, RuneQuest. A lot of games had the time had the quest in the name. But yeah, that was the, those were the big games. Yeah, luckily I never got into those. Mainly because I didn't 
I already, I already have all, oh, whoa, a lot of, uh, I already used up a lot of my time on other things. I didn't need to use it on, uh, on MMOs, you know. Now, yeah, better just go in there. Mainly because they're not, they don't have that much HP. They don't do that much damage to me. But still. Yeah. Of course, we've got jellyfish around here. Jelly, jelly, jellyfish. It's peanut butter and jelly time. Yeah, I get, I get, I can understand memes and stuff like that. I don't like them, but I still understand them. All right, let's get you guys. Yeah, just poison you and run away like a little punk. Oh. You tried to stun me, you jerk. And now you get death. I didn't say poison for two months. It's not like you can do a ton of damage to me, so. Yeah, I don't know if the water is pretty. Actually, it might be the easiest area, actually, in the game. Despite, you know, the whole, you know, uh, jellyfish or uh, water elementals uh, freeze, trying to freeze you in melee. If you're playing melee characters, yeah, that might be a bit tough. But if you're playing a ranged character or focused melee on ranged attacks, you're probably not going to have as much trouble. And really, there's not a whole lot of major hazards that really worry you. I mean, even with the Earth Realm, you had the, you know, rust monsters, so you had to equip leather armor to survive those, or not have your equipment get destroyed. But here, yeah, it's just, you know, just watch out for the squids, I guess. Or jellyfish, I mean. I don't know why I keep saying squid. I guess I just want some squid now. Who's up for calamari? Oh, the, yeah, the water foundation. Yeah, this area is pretty quick, too. All right. Yeah, we're not gonna drop in yet, obviously. I wanna go to the other section. Onwards, backwards, forwards. Swords, axes, harbors. I keep thinking, I, I, I think that's from Champion of Norath, actually. I need to play that one of these days. That was actually a pretty good um, hack and slash game, too. Oh, right, I uh, accidentally unequipped my. Uh, uh, Crushing blow, or stunning blow, but. Yeah, Champion Mark was pretty good. I almost wanted to play, uh, was it Fallout Brotherhood? Man, that game's. Well, the, the hack and slash part isn't bad, but it takes a major dump on the fall, Fallout franchise, really. Well, before Fallout 4, anyway. No, I don't. I don't like. I don't. Actually, it'll surprise you, folks. I'm actually not a big fan of Fallout 3 and 4. Just because of how drastically different it is from the other games. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And defeat Yetis. Sasquatches, Yetis, you know, Wendigos, whatever. I know they're not Wendigos, but because Wendigos are actually pretty powerful with DMD, if I recall. Yeah, smack, smack, smack. More things with uh, gems inside. Actually, I think some of the builds I want do require Aqua Marines, if I recall. So, although I could always save all of my money for the for the uh, extreme mode, but extreme. I think that's it for the water one. Yeah, the water one's pretty straightforward, and not very long either. You can beat it in like so many minutes. So, this might end up being a short episode because I, I I wanted to at least get to the end of Act Three by this episode. So. There's some story bits after this, obviously, but because this will be a, been the last foundation, it would have obviously whatever foundation is last will be whatever. But all right, and obviously as before, we got another boss, so make sure to save it just in case. You know, even if you're truly prepared for this, truly, truly, you'll uh, you'll want to save. No, I guess I could have saved in the old other slot. Oh well. Uh, here's the part where it's black. That's it. Now I was I was trying to think. I was like I remember it being black at one point or someone talking about it. So you've arrived. You know who I am. I am Eludra, the sea witch, mistress of the depths. My sorcery has sunk one hundred ships and slain two thousand men, and now it will utterly destroy you. <laughs> Well, it's time to release the Kraken for boss time against Eludra. Uh, yeah, we're going to fight Eludra, but she summons her Kraken. 
Actually, maybe that's why the maybe that's why it's black because of a uh, um, because of the ink from the Kraken. But anyway, yeah, Ludra is a witch or a magic user, so she'll shoot ice blast, um, uh, lightning ball at you. Um, yeah, she also summons her uh, Kraken to shoot its tentacles at you. So luckily, I oh, yeah, better heal just in case. Yeah, lightning ball is probably the most dangerous spell in this whole game because it would. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I can't go for it. Because um, lightning ball, what it does is it does continuous DOT damage and it follows you for multiple, multiple seconds. So it can do a ton of damage. You have to be really careful about getting hit with lightning. You know. Ah, yeah, and she can use ice blast on if you hit, she hits you with ice blast, it slows you down. Ooh, yeah, those cracking tentacles, those those pack a wallop. So, but we can do that. We can handle this. Ooh. Too much slowdown, baby. Oh yeah, and if she hits you with that slowdown, well, you're gonna be attacked by uh, her Kraken tentacles. All right, let's. Uh, I guess I don't need stun because you can't stun bosses anyway. So, oh come on! <laughs> as soon as I got to her, she stunned me, so I couldn't like actually punch her. Ah, uh, bullcrap. Ah, uh, she's cheap. She's not the worst boss though. No. Yeah, it it says that every time I try to go next to the Kraken. Oof. Got her. Oh, I shouldn't have used. I, well, I was afraid I was going to get killed, too. Yeah, and unfortunately, with the water being black, it's easy to miss some of the treasure here, which is kind of a dick move. I think it's a gaming bug or some of that. I don't think it's actually supposed to be black. So, oh, there's the water foundation. But yeah, you don't actually have to fight the Kraken. You fight her herself, but uh, yeah, not too bad. I'm not sure who I consider the worst boss or the most dangerous out of the four. Maybe, I would say the dragon, probably, because she has a higher chance of just, because of all she does, she probably has the highest chance of, like, really messing you up if you let it happen. Yeah, that's where the Kraken would have been, so. I hope I grabbed all the treasure. I think I did. But, unfortunately, I can't see it because it, the water's all black, so. I don't know. That's usually why you want to be right next to Eludra when she dies in here. At least if you're playing this version. I assumed in the full, the re-release that they did... I'm going to assume they fixed this, but I don't know. All right. Let's, uh, not anything back here. Probably not. Nope. Okay. Anyway, let's get our galoshes on and activate this thing and see if this MacGuffin thing has, uh, fixed whatever it needs to do, you know. We've beaten the Zentarum and all their generals are our allies, so what next? Yeah, what are, what, uh, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, let's level up. Um. Now, what's, what are the Zentarum doing? We took all the foundations. Did they take them back? Or, you know? Eh, I mean, I could do endurance, but that's kind of one of those, like, last minute things. I haven't really been using stealth. Stealth would be more useful in the extreme mode. Eh, I mean, I could raise my willpower so I can cast more spells, so I could cast stealth and all this other stuff and almost max that out. Eh, yeah, I guess improving stunning blow would be fine. Yeah, let's let's upgrade stealth just just so so it can last longer and stuff like that, and we do more damage with it. And yeah, we'll raise up stunning blow too, if we have enough. Yeah, we have enough. So max out stealth, get stunning blow. Okay. <coughs> All right. What else? What else you got for me, Jarek? You met with success at the Water Foundation. Your reputation is well deserved, as is your reward. Gimme, give gimme. Give yeah, we get five thousand gold and eight thousand experience again. Is that the last of them? Okay, then. Yes. With all the elemental foundations active, we can. What in the? Karn. I should have known you would eventually show up. Desperate to save your patron's plots. I should have killed you back in Nashkel. Not likely, old man. I'll die in my sleep before you put me to the sword. Wait, stop! I did not come here to fight. I've grown tired of your trickery, Sellsword. Your words always wreaked more harm than your blade. Perhaps that is so, but I speak truly. The Zentarum have lost the Onyx Tower, Jarek. But so have you. 
The Vampire Lord, Mordek Solanmere, holds the only way into the tower's core. It is he who controls the tower, now that your agents have brought it back to Torel. Mordok, the Pale Knight, the White Prince himself? Oh, we're doomed. Damn this all. Mordok hasn't stirred for nearly a century. What could he be up to? No one knows. But disaster looms over both my employers and your precious realms one way or another. Darkhold sent troops, but we've lost contact with them. Slain by Mordok's own undead soldiers, I think. Then we'll finish the job. Karn, I know Mordok's shadow magic keeps his keep well hidden. If the Zentarum knew the way, you must lead us. And you, adventurer, we'll need your arm as well. Are you with us? So we do this whole point of the game is to like, you know, do these adventures, fight the Zentarum, do all this other stuff. And now, just because he said so, we just all of a sudden join his team? Or join with him at least? What the? What's going on here? This is crazy. The Keep of Pale Night awaits us. Are you ready? Not yet. Let me talk to everyone else too before we do that, so. I'm in no mood to chat, adventurer. Especially after me, you know, beating your plans every other second, you yeah. know. Yes? <laughs> I just didn't, didn't expect the abrupt yes, so. Um, what can you tell me about Mordak Selenmir? Mordok dwells in a hidden keep on the Battle of Bones. Dismayed at the loss of his reflection and shadow when he became a vampire, he uses potent magic to create false ones. However, his reflection is merely a black silhouette. The Pale Knight has numerous spies throughout the Western Heartlands, most of whom are lesser vampires. One-time adventurers who accidentally stumbled upon his abode and quickly became enthralled with him. It is said that he created the Orb of the Undead that caused so much havoc in Baldur's Gate recently. That is all I know of him. My thanks. Farewell. Um, so yeah, that Orb, uh, uh, during the, um, for those who didn't watch the first game or play the first game, there was a mission where we had to go into a keep and we found this orb that kept creating undead over and over again. We had to smash it with the three original heroes and it, supposedly he created that. So yeah, now now that uh, after doing all the foundation stuff, all of a sudden Karn's like, yeah, this guy actually took the tower while we were kind of messing around. So we need to actually take him down and Harper guy just kind of agrees to work with him. You think with, you know, everything that went on between the two of them because he said, you know, what he said. You think we wouldn't just believe him or something like that, you know? I don't know, man. That just seemed kind of odd. Uh, but whatever. <laughs> uh, let's see. I sh actually, I don't. You know what? I was about to say, it didn't get much treasure there. It was mainly Aquamarines. Yeah, so, you know, we got 14 Aquamarines. I probably missed a couple there down the line. So, okay, well, that's it for that. So, huh. Okay, well, I guess we're. Well, I don't really want to buy anything now, mainly because of where we're going to go to next. Uh, do I have any of this yet? At some point I need to buy one of everything just to show off. Yeah, I don't have any of this. I don't even know if you, if I get any drops. In, I might get a random drop on that, but I might buy one just to show off everything you can get in the game. So, let me see. Yeah, I'll buy, I'll buy one just to show off because I, I think maybe the beginning of the next episode I'll show um, I, have I wish that I, I kind of almost wish the game told you what ma what items you have in inventory so that I could compare what I've got actually uh, I don't think I, no, I have an emerald do I have a jade yeah I have a jade okay well I'll, I'll mess with that later so um, okay I just want to sell some stuff and I didn't realize I didn't really have much because that place didn't really drop anything except for gems so so the Zentarum and Harpers at last must work together to defeat a vampire. But what lies in the vampire's abode? What about the three heroes? We'll find out next time and act four, the final act of Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance two. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Keep of pale night awaits us. Are you ready? And I'll see you next time.